Alright, so up here is uh, the tub for my Chinese box turtle. I got this Chinese box turtle uh, while visiting my friend Charlie. Uh, we're both friends with Anthony from the Turtle Room, and uh, that's where this guy came from. And uh, I was really psyched when Charlie told me that um, Anthony had included one for me. Uh, this is, a, for me, a dream species and something I've always wanted to keep and work with and kind of see what it's like. And so far, it's been really good. This guy's a little bit shy because I just uh, kind of disturbed him a little bit and tossed this little worm in there. But um, you can see there's that beautiful little golden head that these guys have. Um, I keep it pretty aquatic. Um, that was what I was advised to do is start these guys off, you know, really aquatic or semi-aquatic. And then as they get older, uh, you can work them into a more terrestrial habitat. As this guy gets older, he'll probably end up living around the aquascape pond. And what's really neat about Chinese box turtles is they're cold tolerant. So you can actually keep them outdoors year round. You know, if you live in a place like where I live, uh, they can really handle some cold. You know, a lot of parts of China where they're native to, um, they do get some pretty significant winters and these guys go through them just fine. Uh, very similar to our Eastern box turtles. So uh, really stoked to have this guy. It's really fun to watch him. He's got a nice little personality, but I think the phone, <laughs> I think trying to sit here and film him, is kind of freaking him out. So I'm gonna give him a little bit of space and uh, see if he'll eat this mealworm. As you can see, the tub is a pretty basic setup. Um, it's got some fake plants in it. Um, a lot of uh, sphagnum moss. Uh, originally it started off as a little ball, but this guy's kind of torn it all up. But I also have a lot of floating plants in here and I do water changes and add water uh, about once or twice a week. And uh, it seems to stay pretty good. This guy does well in it and um, seems to be doing you know, pretty well. And it's just a very basic setup. This is uh, kind of what Charlie does and a lot of the other guys that keep these is start them off in setups like this. You know, the water stays nice and soft with that moss in there. Uh, gives it a little bit of that tea color and, a, and that much softer pH quality. So I'm feeding this guy some of the Zoomed uh, dried river shrimp. Um, and what I do is I just break them into like a little bit smaller pieces and really likes to just kind of run around and, and eat all those up. And it's really good for him. It has a lot of calcium in there. But I also try, uh, since these guys, you know, in the wild would have a varied diet, I try to never really offer them the same thing twice. Uh, just like I do with most of my turtles is I try to give them something uh, different every time I feed them. And this guy just were they, the Chinese box turtles really respond well to kind of mixing it up with their diet. Um, so far he hasn't eaten those other mealworms, but definitely likes the river shrimp. So next thing I feed it might be something different, maybe a red worm or some fro frozen thawed blood worms, but uh, this guy's always down to eat. So the Chinese box turtle, I have uh, this small cherry head and uh, right now he's eating on a mixture of Missouri, collard greens, grapes, and mangoes. Uh, normally I don't feed a lot of fruit, but um, I'm kind of feeding him at a time that I don't normally feed these guys. So I wanted to make sure that he would get excited enough to come eat um, so that I could film it and you'd be able to see him. Uh, normally he eats first thing in the morning and then kind of hangs out and comes to and fro to graze. Uh, but I wanted to be able to show you guys this guy eating. And uh, he's done really well. I got this one on my trip down when I visited my buddy Charlie with all the cherry heads and just felt so inspired, you know, by all his setups and seeing how he raises everything. Um, but this particular setup, I actually have this piece of plexiglass that covers the rest. His humid hide is here, bowl of water over there, and uh, this will retain um, a lot of humidity in his enclosure. And that just goes a long way to helping create that smooth shell growth that you know we all want and is natural and um, you know just the most desirable uh, for both the turtle and for the uh, keeper and you know these guys are just so fun to watch and you know they do so well and below this this small one I have this one and uh, this guy does really well I got this one from my buddy Jared this is actually my first cherry head that I got this year 
uh, from my buddy Jared, and I couldn't be more stoked on this one. This one's quite a bit bigger. This one's probably uh, about six inches long, and um, just a really pretty cherry head. Nice bright red head, uh, beautiful shell, and eats really, really well. And uh, you know, both of these guys will end up outside. Um, for this one, it'll end up in an outdoor fenced enclosure, uh, potentially around the aquascape pond, or probably um, I'm working on a couple new setups along the side of the yard. So this one may be in one where I'm trying to make like a small stream. And um, I think uh, it'll, be, it'll do really well there. And then the small cherry head will be in like a kind of an outdoor tortoise table, um, probably with like a locking lid because I do want to keep it safe from any predators and uh, I think it'll do really well. So these guys will be outside probably in late April. Uh, by that time, our overnight temperatures should be good and our daytime temperatures will be you know, nice and warm and they'll have plenty of humidity uh, because we have a lot of that here in the South in Georgia. So uh, humidity and these guys do really well in it. And uh, just really excited. I love my cherry head tortoises. These guys are just so fun and um, it's really cool to watch them grow and watch them eat and you know they have so much you know personality not really showing it right now because they're so focused on eating but i really love uh working with these guys and interacting with them and it's gonna be really fun to watch them grow uh leave down in the comments i don't have any names for these guys so down in the comments i want you guys to leave a name for uh this little one and this one below him um, leave some names for these guys what you think i should name them get creative get funny i prefer funny and uh I'll, let, let's see what you guys have for, their, for naming these tortoises. So next we'll look at the Mata Mata and see what he's up to. All right, so right now I'm giving the Mata Mata some uh, live guppies. Uh, the water's pretty stirred up. As you can see, there's some uh, actual egg masses from some snails that I have in there. And this, you know, the bottom of this tank is a natural mix of sand and gravel. And there's just kind of some natural detritus from the plants and the driftwood in there. And it creates a very natural bottom and keeps the water pH exactly what this Mata Mata likes. Uh, but it does uh, make the water get a little cloudy when he gets active and stirs it up. But then once he goes back to resting, it gets crystal clear again, um, but keeps those nice tannins. But uh, always fun to feed this guy. Always glad to kind of share him with you guys. And he's getting to a size now where I'm looking forward to actually upgrading the tank and maybe doing a similar but different setup for this guy. And as well as, you know, getting him back outside for a few months during the spring and summer, uh, like I did last year, which I think is really good for him. But um, always fun to feed the Matamata -mata and get to see him hanging out and doing his thing.